Yes. Morning. It's Saturday morning. It's time for the live cast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a, a Saturday morning. We're in our pajamas. Are you in your pajamas? I have pajamas. <laughs> Orange pajamas? Orange <laughs> pajamas. We're in our pajamas. We've got our favorite drink for our drinking games, which is coffee. I've just uh, got I water today. Fill mine up. Um, and oh, it's the time where we talk about all the great things that are going on in WikiTree and all the good that is WikiTree. <clears throat> And we're going to start that off right off the bat and say, does anybody, did anybody in this group inherit anything, say, wonky from your ancestors? I have one. Yeah? Um, yeah? Well, and just my birth mother, because she's the only one I've met that I really would know the stuff from because I'm adopted. But we both prefer the peanut M&Ms, but we both eat around the peanut and just leave the peanut. There you go. Eat the peanut. Yeah. There you go. So we have like, a, we have a great nephew that we we just got to meet here the past at the family camp out that I was at, and he has some ears going on, and we were all trying to figure out where the ears came from. His dad was there, who's not biologically on our part of the family. Nobody could figure that out. My son has feet. We can't figure out where one of my son's feet came from. The rest of the feet we know them oh, out without man. a doubt. But the one son, the feet. I, my father has this reputation of being a very quiet man, very, uh, uh, very business like, very quiet man. And people always say I'm so much like my dad. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so the question of the week this week, let's get this up here so mm. I can actually talk about it. Share my screen. We're going to go to the question of the week. And the question of the week is what traits or characteristics? We got that up there? Did that work? We have to add you, add it to the stream. Oh, there, there we go. Thank you. No problem. Uh, uh, what, what, uh, what did you, what do you see? What do you have? What do you have that you inherited? Um, we didn't have a whole ton of answers this week, 21 mm -hmm. answers. Uh, for my dad's side of the family, and this is from Judy Stusk, we have a similar shaped eyes. From my mom's side of the family, most of the females have fair skin, brown hair, and green eyes. Green eyes. Green eyes are kind of an odd, mm. rare thing. So that's There's, a fun that's thing. That's special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and and if you have, if you have a, a specific lineage type, you might say, yeah, well, you can tell that I'm from from that part of the family mm -hmm. or whatever. Right. Uh, us Northwestern Europeans, though, were kind of boring. <laughs> <Just saying>. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's uh for my dad's said side lean muscle ectomorph i love how people try and teach us things while we're yes nice a significant significant physical endurance and height way above the norm dad was six seven wow. the man had a duck under doorways yeah, i'm really? five eleven and this is a lady Sis is six feet and brother was six three. We all dwarf mother who stood five foot three. Oh, wow. You know, I'm just thinking about a six foot seven two, fellow two. with a five foot three lady. Oh, yeah. He'd be uh, bending over to say hi. <laughs> or, you know, even to kiss her on the little oh, tree. No. Oh. Just going to walk around with it. Yeah. yeah. So, one blessing from this genetic inheritance I never tortured my feet by wearing high heels. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you wouldn't need them. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Uh, nature lover like my dad uh, and grandfather. Make sure you upvote these uh, great mm -hmm. answers, people. Uh, lots of physical health issues that are related to my family mm, and that sweet teeth. A sweet tooth. Yeah. My grandmother used to every night before bed, she would have a Snickers bar. She would put the Snicker bar on a plate, and with a knife and fork, slice it and eat it. Every <laughs> night before bed, and she says that her doctor I, told her to do it. I yeah. What? I have a sweet dainty. tooth. Have you guys noticed I have a sweet tooth? <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. You and MMs. I think I think I got that. Uh let's see. Accomplished artist. Grandfather was an authentic storyteller. Uh my grandmother, a talented furniture grandfather, a talented furniture maker, and both parents were artistic. All of them were gardeners and valued aesthetics. Uh, characteristics visually based that I see myself. I love to garden plants. 
That's from Living Paget. Uh, Cynthia Crafton says, I got uh, short, wide Fred Flintstone feet from my dad. Oh, that's that because hilarious. you have to run with your car, like make your car go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he he wore a size five, five e. Uh, now size five is like size. That's pretty tiny. Seven in women's shoes. That's that's pretty tiny. Uh, so Cynthia Crafton, if we ever see you, we're gonna ask you to see your feet. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> we are. With that um, size, like really short but really wide, they'd be almost square. <laughs> yeah, Fred Flintstone. Um, I love wow. that description. I got Fred Flintstone feet. That's great. Um, I discovered an entire page of engineers, multiple pharmacists, builders. I'm an engineer, but nearly did pharmacy, and that's from J.M. Mayhood, uh, a nurse. No one on my paternal side. We're talking about characteristics now. Does does following the same profession as other people in your family? My dad was is is an architect and I was an engineer. Does that count? Well, maybe that, you know, proclivity to do that, you know, to have that empathy for nursing or the Yeah. The intelligence for the other stuff. They, the intelligence, more like the, the intelligence, mind. the uh the crap, the way you see things. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, genetic disposition for skills or other traits needed to be a nurse, maybe. Mm -hmm. And that role of a nurse feels very natural. And, and so we got that question answered. Yeah, there we go. By, by one of the commenters. Yeah. Uh, my dad's family were Scottish, English, Irish. They were all small boned and slightly built. Fair skin and blue eyes. I'm all of those. Mom's side is German descent, sturdily built, blue mm -hmm. eyes. Her paternal side, I don't have nailed down yet, but I think they were from Wales. Both sides of my family were handy with gardening, sewing, and cooking. I did not inherit the gardening. You know, I did something. This is for Virginia Fields. I did something last week just for poops and grins. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in your, your origins estimates, I've, I've got Welsh that's showing up. Do you? Yeah, a little bit, like mm -hmm. 3%. And my dad has Welsh. My sister has a whole ton of Irish, but no Welsh. So I started thinking, well, let me just go through. So I started going through ancestors that I knew were on my dad's side of the family to look to see if any of them also had Welsh ancestry, mm. just, just for poops and grins. And I found that a great deal of the people on my dad's side of the family have Welsh. And one of the things that we're trying to figure out mm. is whether or not we have some Welsh background going on. So mm. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, very. Yeah, it is. Um, and, and that's all about, you know, Ancestry's come out with this brand new thing this week that they're going to start charging people who are only DNA members at Ancestry to be able to use the tool where they have the phased parents, the parent one, the parent two, oh. or the the tools where you can um, do some of the work with those those that information. So if you don't have a full paid ancestry subscription and you're just a DNA tester, you're not going to be able to access some of the higher level DNA stuff. Yeah. And that's, that's been kind of an interesting conversation that's been going on in the community over the week is it, but, but why would you take that away from the DNA testers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause it's DNA. So that, that's an interesting concept. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I hadn't well, had the full ancestry. Yeah. Thing. So, so you're saying like, if I, cause I sometimes let my ancestry membership lapse and then I come on and off. So if I'm off a membership, then I can't access the tools. You can't access some of the DNA tools. That is yeah. correct. Huh. They've, they mm. came out with that this week. Um, Angie Bush was commenting on it. Where was, Oh, I think if you look in genetic Genealogy tips and techniques. There was a, a good conversation going on in that Facebook group about it. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. Here's one. Ray Sarlin says, both my sister and I inherited high intelligence. We come from a long line of college grads, including one of the founders of Yale. Oh. Mom graduated, mm. graduated summa cum laude in math and physics and then took a six-month secretarial college course so she could be employed you couldn't get an employment as a mathematician or a physicist as a woman before world war ii wow. uh but there were women code break anyway 
Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of interesting information about that and his interesting. And then Jeffrey Tobin has a really fascinating answer uh, about being mathematically inclined. We're talking about my dad. And, you know, I think my brother was a better mathematician than anybody in the family, I think. Mm. Paternal side, I have similar shaped eyes. Blue green eyes, blue gray eyes. On the maternal side, I have a nose and mouth of my mother. If you supposedly I look a lot like my mother and my father, like from here down, mm -hmm. I'm my mother and from here up, I'm my dad. <laughs> so that was interesting. Somebody actually is talking about their characteristics, their, their physical characteristics. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Janet Puckett likes your question, Eowyn. She says, I find this an interesting question because it is something that I've had to deal with for many years. As a teenager, mm -hmm. I discovered my siblings and I have my father's teeth in my mother's mouth. <laughs> Dad had big teeth and a big mouth. Mother had small teeth and a small mouth. Oh, no. Isn't that funny? Uh, my mother had high, arch, skinny feet. Dad had flat feet. I have one flat foot and oh, one no. arched foot. No. Oh, okay, Fred oh, flips on <laughs> feet, and now we have a lopper. Sorry, yes. Janet, we're not being mean. But, but oh. that is, this is a really kind of a cute answer. We feel uh, your pain. Yeah, wow. we feel your pain. I have one flat foot, one arched foot. My ears are not at all similar. One is my dad's, one's my mother. And then there's uh, the musculature. Dad had tight muscles and mother had limber muscles. What are limber muscles? Are those the muscles that, that, that read a book on a chaise? Yeah, really. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, that that's a pretty funny. I like you know what? Wow. You know what? You want you know what? You're gonna make that I right. did. I there did. I had to do it. I had to do I it. That's do like it. the best answer. Like Fred <laughs> Fred <laughs> almost got it. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Molly, Molly likes it too. <laughs> Molly likes it too. Hey, Molly. Let's see. Uh I look at my great grandfather. I was shocked when I saw photos during my searches. I look like him. And that's Owen Bose Lawson. Have you ever looked at some of those things where they have the 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 uh picture of say John Travolta and a guy from the from the 1920s and it looks exactly like John Travolta but they're not related oh, kind of thing? That's kind of neat. Yeah, that is neat. Um let's see introversion and a love of mathematics and etymology mm. does everybody know what etymology is so the the source of a word right yeah the study of the origins of of words and phrases in human language it, we actually had that discussion here over the weekend in the house we were talking about etymology mm -hmm. uh yeah you can see we have really really incredibly good conversations around here talking about mm -hmm. etymology we are um an intuitive ability to jump on a horse's back from my mother's family who were graziers and stockmen from their parents, parents in the 1400 Cambridgeshire. So that's funny. A intuitive ability to just jump on a horse's back. Wow. Yeah. No. Wow. No. Uh, engineering skills from my father's side, which includes naval architects. Unfortunately, I did inherit their love of the sea as my mother's mother was paranoid about the risk of off spring drowning in floods. Hmm. Okay. This is Jeffrey Tobin. That's, that's funny. Uh, I, I resemble my mother, who's a doppelganger to Empress Liva, Liv Livia Augusta. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, had a couple of good answers, good comments on that. Mm -hmm. Highly sensitive, empath, creative, intuitive, intelligent, nature loving, and spiritual from nice. Westburg. Um, see, school board, obtaining collections of books to start libraries. And on my paternal side, my great grandmother spent her life as a farmer's wife. So I discovered all this after I'd qualified as a professional librarian. Nice. Now that's anonymous shepherd. Are they any any kin to any pips we know around? Pip shepherd. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. Hey. My father was an architect and he designed more libraries than anybody else. That's pretty cool. Was that his primary? Yeah. Gig? He designed he brought libraries? libraries. Yeah. His whole firm. I mean, the whole firm did, but that was mm -hmm. dad's. I took him to the Library of Parliament here, and oh yes, he was awestruck. He was, he was, um, you know, he was just turning in circles looking at it. 
Uh, both sides enjoy playing all kinds of games like cards, board games, and used to host big poker nights with family and friends. The same taste for playing was inherited by my parents and, of course, my sister and me. And I whistle like my dad, very in tune. That's from Vicky nice. Blanco. I think Vicky's in the chat with us today. Oh, hey, Vicky. Yeah. Hey, Vicky. And I oh, hate nice. playing games. What? I, I don't know. My family thinks I'm a weirdo. I will. I love to read a book and keep them company or do something while they're mm -hmm. playing, but I do not like playing those games. Oh, isn't that odd? <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, yeah so good. I did not. My family did that at the beach, and I did not inherit that. No. Mm -hmm. Taught myself to knit and crochet uh, from Kathy Webb. She's talking about uh, hand stitch quilt from the Civil War era, probably made by my great 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 grandmother. I enjoy my own creative work. So being creative, mm -hmm. humor, health, loving chocolate, anonymous harms. We love that. And cooking Those are all and baking, things. not to forget sewing and embroidery. I like that. Just, just give us a short, quick, quick list. Uh, lots of emphasis on education from anonymous Hal Halton, Hamilton. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I have really thick hair from Ooh. my paternal grandmother's side of, funnily enough, I love that word, funnily. Funnily, um, yeah. All of her descendants inherited her hair. My nose is really specific to my paternal side. Almost all of them have it. So that's fun. It's some specific stuff going on there. Mm -hmm. And then I think one more answer from Lorraine Odell is, this is a very interesting one to me. I inherited the waves in my hair from my mother. I appear to have inherited really good health from one of my ancestors, except that I inherited arthritis from one of my maternal great-great-grandfathers. I have a photo of him showing his hands clearly twisted from it, and that's where it began in me. So, yeah, that's uh, that's the question of the week. Hmm. Were you guys talking about your uh, the things that you inherited from your stuff while I was rambling on? I think I saw <laughs> a couple of comments. We had, there was a lot going through the chat. Yeah. Hey, Lash. Uh, yeah, that's fun. Mm -hmm. So that's the question of the week. So I'm going to bring nice. that right on Wait. over to Wait, Greg. I have a question. Wait. No, Aowen. Yeah. <laughs> What's your question, Aowen? Greg, I was just curious if when you met your siblings, if you noticed any similarities between you and them. Well, that yeah, that's interesting. Um, I there is sort of I think there's a similarity between me and my my siblings. Um, but the funny thing is that I got to keep my hair, whereas my my brother, he's a full brother. Um, he's got very, he's very thin up top, <laughs> which is funny because my adoptive brother, the brother I grew up with, also is very thin on top. So oh, funny. In both sets of the, both families, I'm the oldest brother and um, well, old, oldest sibling, and I'm the one with the best hair. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there we go. Um, one of the things I was able to do, I was able to track down pictures of my biological family, um, which is kind of, which was nice because of course I, I'd never, I missed meeting my, my biological father by one year. Oh, man. If I'd done this a year earlier, I would have met him before he passed away. My mother had passed away a few years earlier than that. Um, so, um, so I didn't meet any of my, my parents or grandparents or ancestors, um, but luckily, my my siblings were both alive, and I've met lots of cousins and some aunts and uncles too. But here's pictures of my my tree, and I don't know if like so. My father there, kinda like he's um, this picture would have been when he was in his sixties or so. I think he's got still got good hair there, so maybe I inherited his hair that way. Uh, I'm not sure if I can see like maybe a little bit of this grandfather. It's hard to say. Maybe this grandfather a little bit. I'm not sure. Yeah. What do you guys think? Can you see any similarities there? Can, you, can we look at a picture of your dad larger than in the fan chart? Larger. Yeah, than I was going to ask that too. Uh, like, let's go see. To his profile. I think that's, uh, yeah. So if I go to his profile, I can just do that right there. It's the same photo, but we can yeah. zoom in on that a bit. Huh. Dwight. Yeah. I could see it. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I had one thing that I wanted to show everybody. Oh, and, nice. Yeah, this is all of my maternal line ancestors. And this That's is from, cool. uh, from one of the webinars that I did for Legacy Family Tree. That's me, actually, on the far left. That's me uh, mm -hmm. from my university uh, photo. My mother, my real mother, her mother, her mother, and her mother. Wow. Do you see any likenesses in there? I think that my grandmother and her mother favor a lot. Mm -hmm. And people say that my mother and I favor a lot, too. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I can see the similarity between your mother there, you and your mother, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so mm -hmm. that's that's an interesting picture. Sorry, I can give you Very that. Very cool. And I'll just throw in there that I have my my me my mother and her sister all have very narrow feet so that's that's my answer to the question <laughs> makes very it hard neat. to buy shoes <laughs> very neat so um to get to the profiles of the week um the uh if you if you um i want you go to the wiki one way way to go to it if you can't find it in your your emails um, is to go to the WikiTree homepage. And then right underneath that is uh, Profiles of the Week. So for this week, we're featuring London. But last week, we didn't get to do Profiles of the Week because we we're in the middle of the amazing Wiki games. And thank you again to AON and all the team and Betsy and all the rest of the team that worked on that because you guys did an amazing job. Yay, so, everyone. Yay. Yeah. And come back at 2, right? 2 Eastern, two Eastern? time? Yep. This afternoon, and we'll have an official wrap up of that. I'll get to do some stats with people, not just stats with trees. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you missed all the tree stats, with Mags, over the weekend. Yeah, you really did. <laughs> we know all about deciduous trees and that's right. Trees of states and countries. That's right, and the birch <laughs> tree, the very first one that to be totally DNA sequenced. There was some pretty cool stuff we learned. It was. Uh, the Y tree. <laughs> the Y, yes. Um, but so the the profiles that we didn't talk about last week, and I'm not going to go into them this week because the theme last week was uh, innovators of the World Wide Web and in, of the Internet. Aren't and we glad we didn't have to listen to Greg talk about that? I, this could have been a very deep, dark rabbit hole. We could have been here all day. Young, we you know? could have been. But I'll just mention them to give them some props and encourage you to go and check out their prof profiles. Tim Berners-Lee was the inventor of the World Wide Web himself. Um, Marion Croak, which is interesting with her last name, Croak, uh, invented the voice over internet protocol. Or, or VoIP, or that, you might. Or that, or that. Yeah. <laughs> Presumed, hopefully the first vo uh, verse voice over internet protocol was better than just a ribbit, ribbit sound. <laughs> Jack Dorsey, of course, was the founder of Twitter. Um, Douglas Engelbart, um, human com computer interaction in, uh, expert, like mouse and hypertext, was one of the things that he worked on. Elizabeth Feinler um, developed the, pro the concept of the domain protocol. That's like the, the part at the end of a, a web address, like .com, .org, .ca, if it's a Canadian uh, institution, .net, that sort of thing, was her idea. Steve Jobs, of course, uh, um, famous as the uh, CEO of Apple and uh, inventor of the iPhone or uh, shepherding that through and a, a great person who we also lost too early to cancer. Uh, Larry Page founded Google and uh, which is now the Alphabet um, mega corporation. Dennis Ritchie, uh, important in the Unix operating system. Claude Shannon was the father of information theory. So that's going back a bit. A bit. Uh, William, William Thompson, um, who was uh, instrumental in um, the sci science of in, in underground cables, you know. So before the internet, there were these cables that went under the ocean all yeah. across the, the Atlantic to connect. One Cathodic protection. <laughs> you guys don't even want to know about that. That's an engineering <laughs> term. Sorry. It's incredible when you think about yeah. that. Like that's yeah. that's wild, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and then of course Ray Thomason. Some people may have wish that he had not invented email, but for many people, that's how people do business and still do. Though maybe not the youngsters as much these days. <laughs> uh, anyways, but the profiles for this week that we are going to talk about um, 
are inspired because of the most recent uh, WikiTree challenge that is finished, and that's the London, Westminster, and Middlesex ancestors. Can I can I share a cool thing about that challenge? You can certainly do that because you did a great wrap up of that just this week. It was fun. No, they um they gave us six brick walls, and they were brick walls. That... Uh oh, brick walls that that uh that. But frozen, they couldn't do frozen it. Frozen elf. You froze elf. I'm back. Hello. Oh, good. I did. Um, so they gave us six that? brick walls that had been in their journals and that they'd worked on as a society and had not been able to break. And we broke three of them. Woo! Yeah. Wow. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And that... When we go to the to-do lists here in a minute with Betsy, that's going to... Mm -hmm. Boy, look at the segues we're doing here today. Yeah, that's right. Segways yeah. <laughs> all over the place. That's great. Um, so, well, the first the first uh, person uh, is actually the Dutch Duchess Barbara Palmer, whose claim to fame is she was the mistress to Charles II. Okay, so so... I have one. You've got it right there. Stop. Freeze. Betsy, Betsy, Aowen, and I all have this woman as our closest connection. And I want to just point out that we have the closest connection to a woman who was the first baroness of none such. <laughs> There's a fun fact. That. Baroness of none and such. It's right there. You see it? It's right there on your I screen. I see it right there. The Baroness of none such. None <laughs> such. And how many there. degrees are, are we? Oh, uh, let's see. Eowyn is 18, but you're actually, we're actually all 15th cousins to her. Okay. Um, nice. 20 for Betsy and for me, uh, 17. Hmm. Whereas I'm 21 away from her, and 14th cousin is 10 times removed. <laughs> <laughs> the bear. I want to. I want to get a, a, that on my uh, business cards. Baroness of Nonsuch. The Baroness of Nonsuch. The 12th Baroness of Nonsuch, or I don't know how many. First. 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 Yes. Yeah, but Mags would no, be. No, but you. Yeah. You would be. You like, could be the 12th Baroness of Nonsuch. There you go. <laughs> Oh, yes. So, yeah, she was the daughter of William Villiers, uh, who was a Viscount, um, uh, born, baptized in 1640, St. Margaret's Westminster, London, married Roger Palmer on the 14th of April, 1659. And then, gee, wasted no time. In, in 1660, one year later, she was the king's mistress. Um, oh, I'm, it's, it, wow. Now, that um, makes you wonder how what happened to her husband. Yeah, but she was still married to Palmer, and um, and this was when the when Charles was still, was uh, in exile in The Hague. So remember, a couple of weeks ago, when the profiles of the week were um, were another part of England, and Oliver Cromwell uh, was the the profile, and he had taken over. And for a brief point in time, there were um, England was a republic; there was no kings. That's because Charles was in exile, and they'd kill his father and the son, this Charles. Uh, was an exile because he he it was outlawed. And he was outlawed in England. We, we have a question for you from Vicky. Yes. She says, "Was this a known fact that she was his mistress?" Uh, well, her first child. Well, interestingly enough, her obviously her uh, King Charles was not shy about this because he claimed that the fir her first child was her his, but also her husband claimed it was his as well. So they both claimed the first child, but all the rest of them. So that's the Anne. Um, they both, and she kept the Palmer last name, but all the rest of her children were named Fitzroy, meaning that they were uh, children of the king. And um, so... That's pretty well known. So that's pretty well known. I mean, you give you give us a child the last name Fitzroy, it's right there. <laughs> um, but... So the husband got two titles out of the deal. He got he became a baron and an earl. Because he so, shared. You know, so uh, I guess he's okay with that. Yeah. I don't know, different times. 
She was the Baroness of Nunsuch. She was the Baroness of Nunsuch. She. <laughs> <laughs> None of that. Yeah. So there we go. That's that's her. Now next we have Elizabeth Garrett Anderson, um, born in Whitechapel, Middlesex, England. Um, in 1936, passed away in 1917 at age 81 in Suffolk, England, Alderberg. Um, editing in progress. Now, I really like this profile. This is really well done. And one of the things I really like about it is how it weaves in it and it paints the picture of the time. So on the 9th of June, 1836, in London's East, East End, I guess, uh, a daughter was born to Whitechapel pawnbroker. And nothing extraordinary about the child's early surroundings Whitechapel was the classic Dickensian London with problems of poverty and overcrowding. And this was the dawn of an era of great change. So we're probably setting a mood. Very cool. Um, at this moment, naturalist Charles Darwin was returning to England aboard the HMS Beagle after five year journey. Uh, five, four years earlier, the Reform Act of 1832 was the first in a number of major reforms to extend voting rights. Now, one in seven adult males could now vote. I guess it's a big deal compared mm -hmm. to the before, maybe. Um, in 12 months time, the young princess Alexandrina, Alexandrina Victoria of Kent would ascend to the throne um, and become the, uh, would serve longer than any British monarch before her. And no one would have expected that this baby, Elizabeth Garrett, was herself to become one of the great change makers of the era. But look at this impressive list. She was the first woman in British to qualify as a physician and a surgeon. She was the co-founder of the first hospital staffed by women um, and the first dean of a British medical school, the first woman in Britain to be elected to a school board, and the first female mayor in Britain. Like five huge works. <laughs> so very impressive. Um, and she's obviously featured on the stamp here. Nice picture that was included there. So anyways, I really quite like this profile how it puts puts all that stuff together paints that picture so very impressive here she is in defense of so some neat photos added too yeah yeah really nice mm -hmm. thomas anchorage now this is one of the brick walls that they broke through right mm -hmm. and the the person who did the breaking through um if you go back and you watch um the wrap up that AON did earlier this week. Uh, he, um, it was really neat how they, the moderator, the the, the moderator uh, turned it over to him to explain how he went through the process to break that break that wall. So um, I'm not going to repeat that here because I don't remember all the ins and the outs that he had to do. But it was pretty impressive. Nice. Um, so he's the son of Arthur and, and Martha Savage. Now. We know that now after all this work done, but here's all the research notes that were done. And so initially, this is the note from the the society member. I'm just going to say society instead of the whole long. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, uh, according to Ancestry, uh, Thomas Sanquart was born in 1765 in St. Giles and St. George, but I cannot find a birth or a baptism register. Um, so they didn't know they couldn't find any any of that connection. But by the end of it, and um, they know for sure, uh, are pretty sure that it is son of Arthur Ancret and Martha Savage, born on the 14th of March, 1758, baptized the 2nd of April in Shrewsbury in Shropshire. Um, and then they put together the, uh, an actual fr um, free space page, all about the origins of Thomas Ancret and all of the things that they, what they knew initially, the evidence that they went through to, to prove that. So very cool. Uh, anyways, Thomas married uh, in 1789 um, and he's recorded on and tax records in St. Giles. So that's where the St. Giles was originally, um, was, was figured into his, uh, his biography. And then it, gives places where else he was uh, paying rates, other places he was listed as in the records and stuff. And his will was proved in 1803, uh, where it mentioned his wife, his friends, and his sons. That's so, so cool that, that, uh, that, was, that they were able to do that. Very cool. Um, so it 
extensive, extensive use of the research notes, a cool free space page to, to put together all the different arguments and the, right. the proofs. Very, very cool. I, there's a question uh, oh, yeah. that we have. Uh, I have my tree, a supposed illegitimate daughter of a queen. If I tag his father as uncertain, that would not connect me to the queen, right? Question mark. Uh, I think you would still be in the connection finder. But it would show uncertain. It would show uncertain. Though. It would show yeah. uncertain. It would connect you, but say uncertain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there you go. Thank you mm -hmm. for the question. Mm -hmm. Very right. apropos. That's right. So, um, interesting. Um, next we have Mary Jenkins Binkers, and I believe she was also another one of the seven that were chosen. Mm -hmm. uh, she declared <coughs> in the census record that she was born about 1820, uh, and that her surname at birth was Jenkins. There's no positive identification of her of records. Um, so her parents are still unknown at this point. Correct. But she started a relationship with George Domit, uh, probably about 1838, when she was with, which was when Sarah Wells, the woman with whom George had been a long, had 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 a long-term relationship before, died, and they were together by 1839 when she became pregnant with her first child. Um, quite an age discrepancy, though. She was only 18 or 19; he was about 56. Whoa. Um, he had two surviving children that she became the stepmother to. Um. And then we have some, she was at the time of the census in 19, in 1841, she was living at Eli Place in uh, Berth, Bethnal Green, Middlesex, with a partner, George. Um, and there it shows details there. Um, they moved back to Half Moon Street, and George died two months after the baptism of one of her children. Um, after an uh, intrepidant and then flamed leg, that sounds painful. Inflamed leg. Can you imagine having an inflamed leg? I can't Fred imagine. Fred Flintstone that. feet. <laughs> <laughs> and sadly, she was also pregnant again at the time of his death, so she still she had to bear that baby all by herself. Oh. Um, then she moved, uh, she became the wife of William Becker Bickers later. And then they had some children together. So there's uh, lots of information, <laughs> lots of lots of information about her from her early life and marriage on, but not her actual origins. There's some really interesting characters in the whole Domit Vickers Mary family. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The Domits were yeah, they had a lot of fun researching the Domits. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, so look at this, all the Lots of children there, um, but here they like they actually mentioned the the white the connection. Um, when I was, I was thinking like back at uh, where were we here? Back at the the mistress. Um, do that? Does that person? Oh yeah, it did say son of. There was one one of these profiles where um, doesn't that. I guess if you don't register that the the father and the mother are married to each other, they don't show up as an actual. Like you'll see the son, the well, we'll have to come to. I'm. There were children listed, but there was no spouse. Like there was no spouse listed, but that person yeah. was recognized as being the father of the children. Well, yeah. that was the Fitzroy people, right? Yeah. The That's right. Yeah. So that. Yeah. yeah exactly. So if we go back to. Yeah. Where was I here? That, so yeah, that's right. Palmer. Right. So she's the wife of Roger Palmer, but the Charles doesn't show up in her list here, but he is the father of these other ones here. Because he gave them his name. Right, right. Mm. So in the connection finder, then the connection won't be through why, like mother, father, then down to the children. It's going directly from the mother to the children and then up to the father. Mm. Right? In this case. What well, what do you expect from the first Baroness of Nonsuch? <laughs> Nonsuch, no, none of this. But, oh, anyways, Philip Chambers, Thomas Philip Chambers, next on the list here, uh, born at twenty two in Paddington, London. Birth was registered separately, so this is again very cool. Beautiful profile. Mm. Yeah, nicely done. 
There's the, the image from the, uh, the baptism. Shows he was a banker. The father was a banker's clerk and all that stuff. I always think, I always like to go look at those stuff. Um, neat pictures along the side of various places. Um, he was living, uh, let's see, with mother, grandmother, and older sister, according to in 1971. And in Bayswater in 1991. Look at there, the artist the pub. The, they lived above the news agent shop, just to the right of the pub. Uh, he was a motor cab driver in 1911, and his widow uh, was living with him as his wife, despite them not being married. Hmm. Oh, a widow, not his widow. A widow. <laughs> okay, that didn't make sense. <laughs> How is his widow living with him? Okay. There Fantastic photos there. Wow. Yeah, isn't that neat? Yeah. And the map. Yeah. And then the very cool thing that I really like is this map. You would like that, I know. <laughs> yes, yes. So the neat summary here: d d he died in the spring of 1928 in Paddington. He was remarkable for having lived his entire life in one small quarter of London. He driving a taxi must have taken him all over the great city, but he clearly called Paddington home. So there's Paddington Station. And these are all the different places where. He lived or was marked in the census and stuff. So very cool, eh? Yeah, they were telling me that you could walk to all those addresses in like 10 or 15 minutes. So it was a really, really small. That thing. is, wow. That is very cool. Now, is that where Paddington Bear is from? Pretty sure. He must be. Um. So this is the original comment from the members said that he had difficulty finding the birth details for his grandfather. Um, and did we find? We found his birth details. We did. Yay. So this is yeah, one of those his, three. His was interesting because he had, I hope I can say this right, he had two different um, birth records because his mother had registered him and then his father registered him. Oh. And so there were, they had to sort out like the surnames with that and but they figured hmm. it out. And he really had nothing to do with his life. It seemed like he was pretty much out of the picture. Hmm. Um, but he had registered for whatever reason. There's actually, if you click on his father, they, there's a, another, they did a great profile on him too. Oh, okay. Yeah. On Thomas. Yeah. So the, yeah, because in the, um, yeah, Thomas Phillips, there we go. Look at this. Like, this is well done too. Yeah. They did some great work. Yeah. yeah, these profiles are really high quality. Ao, and how big was the team again? The challenge team? Um, we had about seventy, I think. That did something. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Sydney Dyer is next. Uh, born about eighteen twelve in eight, uh, in Kennington, Surrey, England. Uh, died at the age of eighty nine in nineteen o one in Dalston, Hackney, London. Um. No baptism record has been found for Sydney or his younger brother. So that's why it's about 1812, right? Um, uh, his father was a carpenter who um his father was a carpenter and an organ maker. Very cool. Um, the name of his mother is not confidently known, but was probably the Anne who was the known mother of both of his immediately older sister and his immediately younger brother. So that's a pretty good bet. <laughs> Um, and he himself, Sidney, was a carpenter and a joiner by trade. Uh, married Eliza Parker in 1835. And uh, all 10 of his children were born in North London, except for Charlotte, who was born in Surrey, on the south bank of the Thames. That's kind of neat that they added that little piece of geographical information for those of us who aren't sure where Surrey is related to <laughs> the rest of London. Um, None of them were baptized, uh, but all were registered with civil authorities. Now, is that because the baptism records don't exist or for that the particular church, or they just weren't baptized, I wonder? How, like, are the baptism records back then pretty, like, are they all available? Or are there holes? I wonder. Just, just wonder. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Um... Anyways, there we have some census information and quite a nice long, long profile. 
and Eliza died in 1897, and his last residence was, um, was the last known survivor of his siblings. Um, his, his sister Emma had died in 1899, and it was 1901, I think, that he passed. Yeah, there we go. Quite nice. Then we have John Hughes, born in 1815 in uh, Middlesex, England, and died in 1966 in Whitechapel. Um, baptized in 1815. Uh, he was a shoemaker, um, working as a shoemaker. And in fact, specifically, he was a cord wainer. Now, um, had you heard of that? Have you, I, are you familiar with that word? I just learned that word recently. Yes, I, me I too. But when I first before. read it, I thought, well, that's like cordonnier, which is the French word for a, a shoemaker. And in fact, it does come from the same root. So if you search for it, um, a cord wainer is a shoemaker, but specifically, um, the, the uh, someone who makes a shoe from scratch, so mm -hmm. like um, makes an original shoe out of leather, as yeah. opposed to a cobbler, which make which repairs shoes or makes um, shoes out of used material. So mm -hmm. that's the distinction. So he makes brand new shoes. Mm -hmm. Um, he's a head of household in 1951, and again in 61. And then we have some research notes here as well. But there's your new word for the day, cord wainer. <laughs> Sounds like a, a, a bad word. <laughs> it does. Wainer. It's like a French word, cord wainer. Cord wainer. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Baroness of Nunsuch and the cord wainers. And the cord wainer. <laughs> And then we have Solomon Lazarus Lee, born in 1859, uh, died in 1926, um, is a notable. Um, so here, I actually, if you notice, the most recent edit is me. It's you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it says you, but that means me. Yeah. <laughs> what did you do? Um, because when I was looking, when I was reviewing these last, uh, yesterday, um, I looked through here and it said, Solomon Lee, servant, one-year-old. I'm thinking, what? What? <laughs> What's that about? So I actually looked up at the, the ancestry record. Uh -huh. um, and in the in ancestry, see, it says servant. Wow. And I thought, that's unusual. I mean, uh, he's a, that's a pretty, pretty impressive one-year-old if he's making... <laughs> but, if he's contributing so, to the household but if we look closer, the record? well maybe they counted pooping in the diaper i don't know yeah no there he is so this is it right here so lizzie lee his older sister uh -huh. d-a-u for daughter yeah and then here this actually i'm pretty i would say this says s-o-n and then underneath it is s-e-r-v yeah pretty close yeah. so you can see how the transcriber could have made that mistake. Yeah, yeah. But the thing that the thing that made me like for sure this is says son um, is that because under the first servant, then the next one was also a servant, and they just put ditto ditto. Mm. If he had been a servant, then it would have been servant ditto ditto ditto. ditto, ditto. ditto. Right. So, anyways, I was pretty sure that it's his son. <laughs> so I corrected that because I didn't want this poor guy to have to go into service so early in life. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and then I. I uh, sent an email to um, Joe Fitzhenry, the profile manager, to apologize for, you know, tweaking her profile, you know, after she'd done so much work on it, and she was quite happy to. Um, Joe's it was, this wonderful. Is a case, this is a case of where, you know, um, I think she's the the WikiTree sourcer, which, um, you know, takes the stuff that's on here, but, you know, it's va always valuable to look at the original source documents to see if there's a discrepancy. So... And the other thing is, it had the head of the households as Saswins instead of Lazarus, but it was clearly Lazarus on the sheet there. So I fixed that in the in the reference as well. But anyways, um, they included lots of lots of, of those tables. Um, so anyways, but he became uh, his claim to fame. Uh, Solomon, who later went by Sydney. Um, was that he was the second editor in chief of the Dictionary of National Biography, so that would have been a very important uh, tool for genealogists then and now. 
His sister was also a contributor um, to that. And so he devoted his life to literary works and never married. Here we go. And passed away in 1926. Then we move on to Arthur William Patrick Albert, Saxonberg und Guta of Connaught and Strathern, also known as Prince Arthur. Um, and he uh, was born in Buckingham Palace court in 1850 to Queen Victoria, died uh, on my birthday, but a few years earlier, <laughs> 1942, <laughs> at age 91 uh, in Surrey, England. He's managed by the Canada Project because he was the Governor General of Canada from 1911 to 1916, so at the beginning of the First World War. He was our Governor General, hmm. third son of Queen of Victoria and he was, Governor General. He led, he led the country during the Parliament Hill fire then. Uh, yeah, I think you Yeah, know. that's interesting. Yeah, he renovated Rideau Hall and he made an effort to contribute to the social life of the capital. So Rideau um, Hall is where the Governor General lives. Yeah. And currently the Prime Minister is living on the campus of Rideau Hall because um, the Prime Minister's residence is ramshackle. Ah. They decided this past week they're going to tear it down. Oh and, really? And let the find some other place to either build or continue to let the Prime Minister live in the cottage at Rideau Hall. Wow. Yeah. That's, there you go, some Canadian stuff you didn't want to know. Now you know. <laughs> now we, know. we always want Canadian trivia. Bring it. There we go. There we go. So um, he led a, uh, Prince, uh, Prince Arthur led a military career. Uh, he married Princess Louise of Prussia. And they had three children, Princess Margaret, Prince Arthur, and Princess Patricia. And I think it's the daughter of Princess Patricia, who is the namesake for the famous um, Princess Patricia uh, regiment. Oh. And everybody's going that they're famous? Well, they're famous here in Canada. <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, there we go. Um, and then we have Enid Diana Elizabeth Rigg, daughter of the British Empire. Um, yep. Dame, Dame Diana Rigg, um, who was a wonderful actress, born in 1938 in Doncaster, Yorkshire, and died the 10th of September, 2020, at age 82 in London, England. Uh, she was, of course, in the Avengers in the 1960s. She was a, a Bond girl in, in Her Majesty's Secret Service. She was the matriarch of uh, one of the big houses in Game of Thrones. And she was starred in Doctor Who. And the cool thing about it is when she started, <laughs> when she started in Doctor Who, she acted alongside her daughter. And that was the first time the two of them had ever acted together. That's cool. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but she was the daughter of a railroad engineer and uh, Lewis Rigg and Beryl Halliwell. They traveled, the family had traveled to India. And she spent the first eight years of her life there in India. And she learned how to speak Hindi, which is pretty wow. cool. Um, here is uh, her extensive film and, and theater career is, is outlined here, but... We just gave you some of the highlights up, up top there. Um, the Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire. Uh, not daughter. I, I said daughter of the British Empire. Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire. Uh, twice married and twice divorced. Passed away from cancer at 82. And I believe this is the last one. William White, 1782, born about. Um, died in 1849. Um, Bachelor of the Parish of St. Martin in the Fields, married Marianne uh, Bradley in 1812. And he was a chemist, carried out his business in the Haymarket and had a number of, he worked, he traded with Hastings. So he was part of Hastings and White. And then when Hastings died, um, it initially continued. He kept the Hastings name and then um, moved on, became Hastings and Bryant. And then he dropped the, the Hastings, Hastings name went to just Mr. White's. And that, that's kind of some neat, um, some of the ornamental pots, ointment pots from his shops. And it was Hastings and White, and then it was just White by itself. Oh, Lynette, Lynette, do What's not Lynette give thing? me, Lynette, Lynette, Time for a nap. give me fodder to get Greg off 
<laughs> there we go. You're putting I people to sleep, it. Greg. Okay, well, I'm done. There we go. <laughs> there you have the profiles of the week. Woohoo! Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Uh, Lynetta's going to be so mad at me for that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Was that was fun. I, that was that was a lot of fun. I had a question I was going to ask Betsy. Yes. What's that? I was going to ask you a question, but I can't remember what it Were was. Were you going to ask me about my mug? That's exactly what I was going to ask you. <laughs> what was your last? Morning. I am drinking from London. London. There London. you go. Whoa, stop. There you go. London. Perfect. To London. go along with the, the all of the people that Greg just put us to sleep yes. talking about. Uh, I'm so sorry, Greg. <laughs> oh, Lynette, I love that. That was such perfect timing. You, you have something to share with us besides your mug. Yes, I have a tip. I have a tip. And I would like to know how many people like to-do lists. I do. I do. I do. So <laughs> I'm going to show you. Well, first of all, let me put this in the chat. This cool. is this will be helpful to what we're going to talk about. The tool we're going to talk about is called the watch list picker. Um, and I'm not. Is it is it an app or is it a it's not under apps. So the only way. Thank you, Vicky. Um, <laughs> the only way to get to it that I have found is through this help page. So let's go there and uh, I'm going to have, right, I'm going to have to add to stream. Okay. And then make it bigger for you. Watch list speaker. Yes. Um, so this is really, really, it's not too long of a help page. I, I um, read through it a couple of times to just absorb everything and that helped. Um, and I thought this was great advice. Uh, experiment. Just play with it. Um, mm -hmm. Basically what it's going to do, and, and we're going to create a to-do list so you can see it in action, um, is that it's going to bring up your watch list and you can select a subset of your watch list that's pertinent to, say, a particular project you're working on. Um, and then it will create a free space page. Um, yeah. And that, that, that thereafter, you can manipulate it like you would any other free space page. Um, so And so what it would look like, for example, um, mm -hmm. here's the one that I did that was just a, a very basic one. I'm going to show you a better one in a minute. <laughs> um, so this is a project I'm working on, and I selected the profiles. Um, and you can add notes such as, you know, why it's why it's pertinent. I can mm -hmm. sort, so I can put them in ah. yeah, f filters. Nice. I could alphabetize them. So, um, and then what I also did, I, there's this good reminder um, that maybe, maybe you want to link it, hyperlink it on your profile. Ooh. So um, you, you're seeing my profile now, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Um, what I did was um, current research projects. And then I hyperlinked to it and just gave a little little phrase about what, what uh, I'm doing with it. So, nice. And that, that's a great way to, you know, pique people's interest in collaboration. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. who knew that I was working on the Southwicks? They're, yeah. they're, they're actually not related to me. So, but I would love to collaborate with anyone, anyone else who is. So um, now here's a better example from Miss Mags. Yay, Max. Here's one of Mags's to-do lists. Um, Mags, you want to say anything about your to-do list? Yeah, that it's. I did this to-do list back in 2016, and this mm -hmm. is basically my biggest questions in my family history at the time, mm -hmm. and it's still relevant. The only one that I have been able to tackle and actually answer is the Robert Templeton Senior. Uh, mm -hmm. through DNA and through the North of History Family, the North of Ireland Family History Society, we've been able to figure out that uh, Robert Templeton has two brothers that came to the uh, colonies, had at least one brother left, and they're all from Island McGee. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and even though the Templeton name supposedly doesn't, didn't go into Ireland until the 1600s, we do have them very early in the, the Island McGee area with the surname Templeton, and they are of Irish descent, not Scottish descent. Mm -hmm. And so that's, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting. When the, so that's the only one I've been able to solve. So mm -hmm. all of these are still good. Um, there's one up there, um, Edmund Bacon. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, a guy went through and kind of checked the leader's royal connections. And um, the Bacon family is, th this was a direct line back to the Lord Keeper, the seal in the 1570s for Queen Elizabeth I. And I don't know how many people know about Gustave Anjou, but he was a great fraudster. Uh, and he would take uh, a, a wealthy family and say, yes, I can find all of your connections to royalty. And he did that with this particular Bacon family. But the guy who did the, the work for the leaders came back to me and said, you know, you're a Gustav Anjou fraud on that line. And there's actually a will for the fellow that had been connected as Edmund Bacon's father saying that he had no children. So that kind of <laughs> cut that line off. That was 18 generations whacked with one held swoop. But that's a good thing. So mm. that one is still it. But there's... We're connected to the Bacons, but it's obviously through a different line than what we thought. So Right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, these are flexible tools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, use the, the to-do list, you know, whatever way works for you. Um, so let's make one. Um, okay. So if I go to um, there, you can get to this page right from the watch list picker page. Um, and it says, <laughs> Thanks, to, to create a to-do list page, click here. Um, I'm going to, now I have a project where I'm working on composers. So I'm going to call this musical notables to-do list. Um, since it's various families, I'm not going to do a surname tag. And then when I come down here, Here's my watch list. Um, probably handiest, uh, John Philip Sousa is the one that I've worked on so far. Mm. So let me go to page five. Okay, getting there. There we go, Sousa. Um, maybe there's some Sousas on the preceding. The second page. line, there was a John. Yeah, I, I just, I want to catch this one over here. Okay, okay. so I'm going to select. And then am I select, select, select. Okay, that's enough to get us going. Um, do not forget to do this first, which is something I did. And oh. then I'm frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> and then- What was it you did? It's hard for me to see it on my screen. Oh, there's this button here. Um, oh, yeah. Add selected items to lists. There you go. Thank you. Okay, yes. And then profiles successfully created. Now it's a free space page, just like any other. And there are my profiles. Wikitree's ability to do stuff with free space pages. We've talked about it like three different times today. Yeah. It's just amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, here's where I'm I, the, always a collaboration element to the tip, because I could not figure this out. So supposing I want to change this. OK, I go to my edit tab, mm -hmm. just like any other free space page. Maybe maybe I'm done with somebody and I, I can see how I would delete them. But how would I add somebody without? Is there a way to get back to the watch list picker to oh. add people? That's my question. Hmm. Hmm. I'd be tempted just to copy one of the people's entry and then just yeah. tweak it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Provided there are not too many people to add. I, I, that would yeah, exactly. Fun. There's a lot, though. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, okay. So in the spot there where it says add to list, is it putting that? HTML, or is it putting that wiki text anywhere? 
I mean, I suppose you could create another free space page and just merge the two teams. Yes, yes, and that that is addressed on the help page for to-do lists. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, what if I'm done with my to-do list and should I delete should I delete it? And the answer is yes, you could, or mm -hmm. you could merge it into another one, or you could keep it for a historical record of what you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so merging is possible. Hmm. So. Um, yeah, that's that's a question. Um, and if you want to add, let me let me get out of here. Um, if I go go back to my Southwick one, you can you know add these notes, and and that's why I wanted to show Mags's page is because um, notes. that was a really good example of mm -hmm. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was like that. So there. Go get your to-do list nice. done. As has one that she's worked on. I'm going to throw that up. So oh, yeah, please. Nice. Yeah. And then, we'll, and then we'll, after that, we'll celebrate some ancestors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. And okay. people love your, your trips. Tips. Oh, trip. yeah. They're great. You're trippy. Your I'm, tips I'm and pretty. tricks. Yeah. Thanks. Um, were you going to put up as a sheet or... No, I was just going to show you, um, just give you that. But she also oh. says that you can add a column to to sign that it was complete. Yes, like Ooh. a checkbox. A checkbox, yeah. nice. Yes, like I really love that feature. <laughs> it's such a feeling of accomplishment. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Thank you, Azure. Nice. Okay. So, so our, yeah. you can't delete profiles, right? You can um, merge profiles together, but you can't actually delete a person, or I don't think it's easy to you, delete a profile. You can delete person. you can delete a free space page by removing everything from it, and then the system will automatically take it out when that when was it my question. Yeah. Page. So free space pages you can delete, but people yeah. you can't. Right. 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 Okay. All right. Well, it's a brand new month, mm -hmm. which means a whole new group of ancestors that we can celebrate. And I was just so jazzed that um, there were 10 responses um, to my, you know, who are we gonna celebrate out of your ancestors in September, G2G post. Um, and actually, I'm not gonna do 10. Um, <laughs> I actually looked at the dates that were important and sort of started to space them around the month and hopefully close to the Saturday that's important to those people. Um, so um, we're gonna start with um, Pat, let's see, no. Karen, no, Pat Miller. Pat Miller, uh, let me share this tab instead. Um, no, we're not going to start with Pat. We're going to start with Karen Stewart. That's right. Okay. So Karen um, said that she has uh, quite a few birthdays in September, including her mother and grandmother. Love that picture. Nice. Show me. Is it big enough? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um, her grandmother's birthday was is September 21st. Her mother's was September 15th. Uh, this photo is from the forties, just wow. really sweet. Ella, Ella and Marianne. Mm -hmm. And then also her twin sons. Oh, September 4th. On the 4th. So just yes. a couple days away. Yep. Two days away. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there were a lot of photos that came through with the, the, um, the responses too. So that's, thank you. Keep those coming. Um, then, um, let's look now, Pat Miller's ancestor, <laughs> um, who is Reinhard Gottfried Lauk. And I really hope that I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> she put it phonetically in her response. Um, born in, uh, Pomerania, Prussia, um, and, um, born in 1860 and came to uh, Canada as, as was many, many others were doing at that time, emigrating um, <laughs> and came to Renfrew, Renfrew. Is that right? Yeah. Yep, Renfrew. Yep. Yeah. And right up, in, uh, up in, where I live. In mm -hmm. Ontario. Um, so he was following his brother, Albert. Um, he left Ham Hamburg on, in April, 13th, 1888. Uh, they arrived in, in May and then 
Um, he worked, at, his brother had sent word that there were jobs um, in, in the mills. So he worked as a will, mill hand, got married, and um, a few years later, and very sadly, uh, he died um, of typhoid fever when he was only 31. So um, uh, let, me, let me return to what Pat says. Um, uh, this is, yeah, he died on September 1st, 1891. Um, his widow remarried a year later, and Albert, the brother, was a witness which mm -hmm. I, Pat, thought was kind. Uh, mm -hmm. Reinhardt wasn't the only casualty of typhoid in the Lauk family. In 1907, Albert's wife died of typhoid. Um, but the mm -hmm. difference being was that Albert, Albert had an opportunity to have a family, which sadly, Reinhardt did not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Ruth, Ruth Jowett is in the chat. Mm -hmm. So we're going to celebrate... Um, her second one, one set of her second great grandparents, uh, both from Yorkshire, uh, Hanson and Sarah. Is that is that right, Sarah? I think yes, Sarah. Um, and um, this is just a Ruth. Congratulations on this profile. I, I really enjoyed reading it. Um, it's uh, so great, full of pictures. Uh, the clogs are here because. Nice. Hanson's father, Samuel, was a clog maker. Mm. Yeah, so this is in, similar to what he would have made. And the thing that I really liked about it is having looked at so many records, um, there are no records to look at directly on the profile, but Ruth describes them so well mm -hmm. that I, I feel like, oh, okay. I almost feel like I'm looking at the record. Yeah. Um, we have a view of Halifax from around the time of uh, Hanson's birth year. Um, churches that were important. Uh, in here's a, a, a woolen mill. Hmm. So yes, just just really a really a profile made lovingly. And wow, so that was you. very well done. Thank you for sharing that. So. That's what I got. Nice. Very nice. nice. We're so glad that you guys join us for Saturday. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to throw up the uh, information here for the things that are coming up in the next week. Uh, Wiki Tree Challenge, the Indiana Genealogical Society, is running through the 7th. So mm -hmm. Indiana, that's a... That's mm -hmm. fun. Mm -hmm. uh, member of the week is Bruce. Is it Simons or Simmons? Hmm. That's a sign. And uh, that's mm -hmm. already done. The question of the week, the weekend chat. You're here. Australia Cemetery cleanup open to all members. Now, I don't know that they're actually physically going to be going out to any cemeteries, but that would be interesting if they do. Just give us some pictures, show us what's going on. Bingo, Wiki Tree B uh, <laughs> coming up on the first, the second. We'll be back here that same day. If you're interested in sharing the social media information, Azure has great information. She's like our social media maven. Mm -hmm. She is. Uh, so if you want to share information like uh, our video for today, make sure you upvote us and like us. Yes. And uh, even if you watch us later on, we're glad that you're watching us later on and we appreciate you being around. Uh, we love WikiTree and we love sharing WikiTree with everybody. Question of the week will be up. One Name Tuesday is... You help me with this, Greg. Gugino? Oh. Gugino. Gugino. There we mm -hmm. go. And you guys like to do this to me. Uh, the one question <laughs> is Nokislan Zacatecas. Now, I had to look that up. It's a state in Mexico. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, WikiTree Plus with Alesh. And then uh, the yep. source -a is the event showcase coming up on Thursday. New member question and answer with Betsy Co. Yeah. And Connection Finder is uh, on Friday. For for Friday also is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We are very sad to hear that Jimmy Buffett has passed away. Uh, and I'm sure that he is uh, going to be thought about coming up for that week. Friday date night is coming up. So if you need need to do something with Julie, we need Julie to have some dates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so get a bottle of wine and a rose and take it on uh, Friday and hang out with 
uh, Miss Julie. And then hang out with us again next week. We look Please. forward to seeing you. <laughs> yeah, we like we like you. Come back. We like it. <laughs> Uh, and so we're glad to see you. We're glad that you're here for the Saturday live cast, having fun and relaxing and just being. We enjoyed that. So you guys have a great, great week. And we will see you here again next week. Next week.